All right, so here's the new Nike Metcon 6 amp, newest version of Nike's cross trainer shoe for the year 2020. And it looks pretty good. It is an amp colorway. Amp is a couple different things, but in this case, it is mostly just kind of a bold style, a different design. There's no particular gimmicks on this shoe. You know, it doesn't glow in the dark. It doesn't have an upper layer that rubs off, nothing like that. It's just a fancier version of the Nike Metcon 6. So in the side-by-side -side testing, you'll see that it's uh, the same functionally from a cushion drop weight perspective uh, and more. Although with the uh, different upper, so the upper is definitely different and not perforated like the regular Metcon 6. You'll notice too, it is using the translucent outsole. Uh, so you can see kind of the darker color underneath, at least I think this is translucent. It's not really a purple color, it's translucent outsole on top of black material. And uh, that kind of gives it a unique look. Uh, the heel counter is chrome coated. It does have the warning sticker saying you know, with time and use, the chrome will wear off of the heel counter. So this comes, that same warning is on every chromed, chrome-coated heel on a Metcon shoe. I've also seen the paint come off on non-chrome uh, heel counters on the various Metcon shoes as well. It is functionally identical to the Metcon 6, as I mentioned. Uh, fit and sizing is the same. I went half size up, as I always do in the Metcon line to get enough width up in the toe box area, otherwise they're just too tight. These are a tiny bit long for me, but I'll take too long over too narrow any day of the week, as far as comfort goes. And uh, they are just as noisy as the Metcon 6, with the very firm ridge on the heel. Uh, but overall, pretty pleased with these. I think they look nice, they look good. I think that's what you expect the most when you get an amp shoe. All right, so let's check them out side by side. The Nike Metcon 6 amp and the launch edition of Nike Metcon 6. So they're the same in a lot of ways. The drop is the same. I can tell just by having two different shoes on. The drop is the same. The cushion is the same. It's the same outsole, same midsole. Uh, so no changes there. Uh, it fits the same in that it is a Metcon and it. Uh, I have to go half size up to get enough width up in the toe box, specifically right here. And then it's fine if I get my regular size that is simply too tight in the Metcon shoes. And you can see overall, very much the same. I It's hard to say if the upper on the amp is gonna be less breathable than the regular, but I, I, I'm thinking it's gonna be because it's dense. It's not perforated. It's, it's a light, fairly thin material, but it is definitely not perforated like the regular Metcon 6. And it, it, to be honest, it's really hard to feel the difference in uh, in shoes as far as that goes. I mean, logically, seems like the bigger perforations would definitely result in the uh, better breathing shoe. The other thing is the amp is just as noisy as the regular Metcon. So these have a really firm rim on the heel. And when you're walking on, I'm kind of stomping my heels to exaggerate the effect, but when you're on wood floors, tile, gym floor, anything like that, these are the noisiest cross trainers of the year. And uh, these are no different. Side by side, just warm through the house on the wood floor. They are just as noisy. So overall, uh, you know, if you like the amp colorway, I'd say get it but don't expect that it's gonna have any functional differences from the regular Metcon 6. And that's okay, because AMP is supposed to be a fancy, bold design for the most part. 
All right, here's the new Nike Metcon 6 amp, the newest colorway of the Nike Metcon 6. So this is an amp shoe. Amp is normally a bold style, bold colorway, sometimes a gimmick like glow in the dark or an upper layer that wears off, stuff like that. But as far as I can tell, these are just a fancy looking version of the Nike Metcon 6. These are about 10 bucks more. And what you get for that is just a fancier looking of the Metcon, fancier looking version of the Metcon 6. So let's take a tour. We, um, if you saw on the on foot, we compared um, the Metcon 6 amp to the Metcon. So you already know that functionally, this is basically exactly the same as the Metcon 6. So it's all going to boil down to, do you think this looks better? Would you prefer this colorway versus any of the other colorways of the Metcon 6? So start with Soul. Uh, it's the standard sole. They are using, it looks to me like it's a translucent sole and you're kind of seeing, it kind of looks purplish blue because it's translucent, but there's black color underneath. As with all Metcon 6, there is sticky rubber up front for better traction, firmer rubber in the heel for support and durability. You can see the diamond-shaped heel that helps to give the Metcon 6 a little bit of extra width. And you can see that, of course, the shoe, being a Metcon 6, has the monster-sized rope wrap. So this is where the outsole wraps up around the midfoot, helps you to grip the, shoe, uh, grip the rope while you're doing rope climbs, and it is on both sides as well. So one of the prominent features of the Metcon 6, that mega size rope wrap. Uh, four foot flexibility is really good in the Metcon 6. People often ask about that and uh, it's really, really good. They've got these preformed flex grooves up front and that helps, but you know, there's just not a lot of stiff material in the toe area of the shoe to impact that otherwise. Uh, how about the heel counter? So you can see it's chrome or chrome coated at least. And as with all the Metcon shoes where they're using this chrome coating, it comes with a warning sticker. It says, it was right there. I did a poor job of taking the sticker off. It says chrome coating will wear off with time and use. And I think you can see it's already getting dinged up there. Um, this happens in all the shoes that have the chrome coating. And I've even seen the paint come off on non-chrome Metcon shoes as well. So the heel counter, as with all the Metcon shoes, it's got kind of a knife edge on there. The idea is that like it's minimal friction against the wall if you're doing uh, handstand push-ups and things like that. You'll see too, the heel is coated and it kind of looks, you know, like a reptilian, almost like a snakeskin scales kind of pattern. So that's all over the heel. That's uh, different, of course. And uh, you can kind of see as we move around the shoe, it's slick, it's shiny. Um, it feels pretty tough. It's, I don't want to call it rubber. It almost feels like vinyl, like it's shiny. It's shiny and it's tough. And you can see that there, right? It's not like a matte flat uh, colored material. So very shiny there. It's got kind of like a cross hatch pattern. Uh, you've got some reinforcement up in the toe. So, you know, this is an area that can wear quite a bit. You've got the uh, outsole wraps up around as a toe guard, of course just like all the Metcon 6 shoes. On the other side, you can see the swoosh, and uh, they do this in all the Metcon shoes, but they kind of overlay that that hatch, cross, ha cross hash pattern over the swoosh. You can see that we've got fly wire in use, just like the regular Metcon 6. So these little, these are Vectran filaments. They wrap, they wrap around the base of the laces, and you can see on the inside of the shoe, these kind of go down through the body of the shoe. So we can tighten up, kind of helps give the shoe better structure, better fit uh, through the midfoot and things like that. At least that's what I think it's for. Um, the laces, they're nice, they're flat. I like flat laces. I don't like a big fat round boot lace on my cross trainers. They've got, they got like dots on them, looks pretty cool. Nothing here glows in the dark or anything like that as far as I know. And you can see the, uh, the lace tip, lace protector has like uh, almost, it's got some dots on it. That looks kind of cool. So nice, tough lace protector on there. And, uh, you know, what about the tongue? It's thin. It's minimally padded like you'd expect in a Metcon 6. 
It's got some random stats printed on the inside. This is uh, actually, I think what somebody told me was that this is meant to be the amount of testing that the shoe went through. Uh, so interesting. Uh, and you know, the big difference here, look at the upper. It's not the super perforated upper of the regular Metcon 6. It is thin. It is effectively single layer of material, so I cannot separate an inner and an outer layer there. One layer, it's slick, it's smooth, it's comfortable. Probably doesn't breathe as well as the regular Metcon 6, but I don't have any hard numbers to back that up. Uh, just logically looks like it wouldn't breathe as well. On the inside, You've got, as with all the Metcon shoes, you've got the removable midsole, the drop-in midsole. This is two different pieces of foam. It is firm in the back, up here in the front, where there's quite obvious split. This is much more cushioned, much more mushy, and provides better cushioning when you're up on your toes doing, uh, you know, jumping rope and box jumps if you land on your toes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the heel is firm as i mentioned these are good for lifting weights and squats and all that kind of stuff just like the regular metcon six of course you'll notice the uh the midsole it's dished so it kind of you put this down the shoe and your foot kind of helps keep it in place that's nice uh nothing particularly revolutionary there and it also comes with the hyperlifts of course so the hyperlifts these are the little uh, firm plastic drop-in wedges. These go underneath the midsole. You put these in the shoe and you can see right there, it gives you an extra eight millimeters, eight millimeters of heel to toe drop on top of the four that's already there. That gives you a total of 12. So having your heel up a little bit higher reduces the ankle flexibility you need to use to get down deep in the squat or you're picking the bar up off the floor and all that good stuff. What I like best about these, you can take them out you don't have to use them. You get four, you get 12, your choice. In the women's shoe, they add six. So that gives you a total of 10 in the women's version of the shoe. Uh, I do not believe there is a women's version of this Nike Metcon 5 amp though, just to be clear. So uh, drop in midsole, as you'd expect, pretty cool. And overall, I mean, it's got, you know, it looks like a Metcon 6, a little bit fancier, a little bit nicer. Uh, worth an extra 10 bucks? I don't know. Do you like it? Do you not like the regular other Metcon 6 colorways? Uh, because otherwise it is pretty much like a Metcon 6, of course. Okay, so now uh, let's just line it up with a regular Metcon 6, just so you can see side by side. I mean, you know, there's not a lot to see. There's not a lot for me to talk about, yet somehow I'll find a way to fill the silence with words regardless. So same shape, same sizing. I go half size up, otherwise my toes are too tight. I recommend most people do the same, but hey, everybody's foot is different. I can't possibly give you exact sizing advice without knowing uh, you know, what size your feet are and stuff like that. You can see the outsole, really no differences there. Uh, and, you know, the big thing is, again, the perforation, perforated upper here on the Metcon 6, the regular, versus the not perforated upper on the amp. Both look good. I am plenty happy with this regular Metcon 6, by the way. So I think it's a good shoe. And uh, same, same heel, or same collar in the back. Heel comes up the same, same heel counter. And, uh, you know pretty much the same shoe. It's just like a different colorway.